Hey guys, hope you are well. So here we are gonna look at electrostatics. So we need to go back to the original structure of an atom, okay? So we know that an atom consists of a nucleus, and inside the nucleus, let's draw it a little bit bigger, inside the nucleus we have things that are positively charged, and those are called protons, and then we've got other things in the nucleus which are, they're not positive or negative, they're neutral, so I'm just gonna draw them as little dots, and they are called neutrons. Then on the outside of the nucleus, we have these energy levels. I'll just draw two. And those have electrons, which are negative. Electrons which are negative. Okay, by now we should know this fairly well. We've looked at it in quite a few um, chapters. Okay, but let's just remind ourselves once again that this big red part which has the protons and the neutrons, neut <laughs> neutrons, neutrons is called the nucleus. And these parts on the outside are called electrons. Now, by looking at the number of positives and negatives, you are able to work out the charge. So for now, I'm just gonna add a few more protons. Okay, so what we can see in this atom is that here we have one, two, three, four, five protons. Okay, so we have five protons and we have um, one, two, three, four, five electrons. So five protons, five electrons. Protons are positive, electrons are negative. So what would the overall charge be over here? Well, the overall charge will be zero because if you take five positives and you add that to five negatives, that gives you zero. So the overall charge of this um, atom is going to be zero, okay? But electrons, as we are gonna learn in this chapter, electrons are able to move. They can, they can decide to leave or more electrons can decide to arrive and that will affect the overall charge. So if you had to go and look at this atom that I've drawn over here, I want you to think about the overall charge. So it's got one, two, three protons. Okay, so three protons and remember protons are positive. And then it's got one, two, three, four, five electrons, five electrons and electrons are negative. So can you see that it has more negatives than positives? So the overall charge of this atom should be negative, but let's go work it out. So if we go work out the overall charge, you're gonna say three positives and then you're gonna add the five negatives and that'll be negative two. So it's got more electrons, which are negative, and so it makes sense that it's gonna have a negative charge. Now, if we had to look at this one over here, let's work out the charge. So if you look at the number of protons, it's got um, one, two, three, four, five. So it's got five protons, and remember those are positive. Then if you look at the number of electrons, it's got one, two, three, four. Okay, so it's got four electrons, and those are negative. So if you had to go work out the overall charge, then that is gonna be five, and then you're gonna add the four negatives, and that's gonna be one. So the overall charge is positive and it's a one. So here once again we have, if we look at this atom, oh, of course we have some neutrons as well. So here we've got three protons. We can see the three positive protons. Okay, so three protons, which are positive. And then we've got three electrons, which are negative. So three electrons, which are negative. So the overall charge here would be zero because three positives and three negatives would give you zero. Now, if I take one electron away, so let's take away one electron. So we just take that one away, okay? Then what would happen? Well, then we would only have two electrons and then what is three positives and two negatives? Well, that would give you a total charge of positive one. So when you take electrons away, the molecule becomes more positive. That should make sense to you. I mean, imagine you've got, let's say you've, you've part of a friend's group at school and there's some learners in that group that are just a bit negative. They always 
um, complaining, they're always being judgmental to others, they're just giving a negative feel to the group. If you decide to get rid of some of those friends from the group and you tell them to rather go find other friends where they can go and complain and be negative all the time, what will happen to your original group? It'll obviously become more positive because if there's less negative people around, then your overall group becomes more positive, okay? So when you get rid of something that's negative, you become more positive. Now let's look at a different example. So here once again we're back to the original, three protons and three electrons. Well let's, well let's first make a summary of what we just learned. When electrons, which are negative, are removed from an atom, the atom becomes more positive, okay? And that's the whole thing I just explained with the friends. And let's say instead you've got positives and negatives like this, so the overall charge is um, plus uh, three plus, and then there's a negative three, because there's three electrons, that overall charge would be zero. Now let's say you have some negative people who decide to come and join your group, okay? So your group was pretty balanced, couple positive people, couple negative people, but all of a sudden, more negative people decide to come and join your group. Well, guess what? Your group is gonna end up becoming more negative. You can think about that. If you have a friend group at school where it's pretty balanced, some people are positive, some are a bit more negative, if a whole bunch of negative people come and join your group, that's gonna cause your overall group to become more negative. And we can work it out by saying that there are three positives in this atom, um, but then there are one, two, three, four, five, six negative electrons. So if you say three minus six, whoops, that's a six, then you end up with negative three as your overall charge. So can you see that the atom has now become more negatively charged? So that, that's a little, another little summary. So when electrons, which are negative, are added to an atom, the atom becomes more negative, okay? The atom becomes more negative. Can you notice that I am only talking about electrons? I always say when electrons are removed or when electrons are added. This is so important that you understand that it is only electrons that can be added or removed from an atom. Now, for the next part of the lesson, I'm gonna show you the different ways that we can add or remove the electrons in real life. Maybe we are gonna use something that your teacher has shown you where you take like a ruler and a piece of cloth and you rub the two together, or we're gonna take two electrical balls, we're gonna put them together and electrons are gonna be moved from the one to the other. That's what we're gonna go and talk about now for this uh, next part of this video. So here we go, how to make electrons move. So we get two types of main materials that I wanna talk about. We get insulators, insulators. Now these are materials where uh, electrons do not move easily. Electrons do not move easily. Okay, and then you get conductors where electrons move easily. Okay, so we're gonna start with the top one, which is when you have insulators. So insulators, the electrons don't wanna move very easily. So that's where we are gonna have to, as human beings, we're gonna have to rub them together very hard to try get those electrons to move. And so here we have a, so remember we're gonna talk about insulators first. And so here we have this table, and it's called the tribo, tribo, ooh, Kev, can we write properly? Tribo electric, electric series. And all it does is it just takes all these weird types of things like rabbit fur. I don't know about you, but I am gonna be rubbing rabbit fur anytime soon, so it's quite interesting. Um, but we take all these different materials, and it helps us to realize um, which, materials would lose electrons and which materials would gain electrons. So I'll show you how it works. Let's say for example, we would like to rub together a steel, let's take a piece of steel, like a steel rod, and let's take some 
paper, for example. Let's say paper, okay? So we're gonna take steel rod and we're gonna take paper. And so here we have our steel rod and here we have a sheet of paper. Now we are gonna go and rub those together. Now remember that inside these materials there are protons, which are positive, and there are, or there are atoms, right? So let's say there's a whole bunch of atoms. And we know that inside the atoms there's positive protons and negative electrons, and then paper is also made of atoms. Everything around us is made of atoms. And so in each of those atoms there are positive protons, negative electrons, okay? So I'm just going to put a whole bunch of positives and negatives on this, um, on these materials but we know that it's because of the um, atoms. Okay, now we are gonna go and take these two and we are gonna go rub them together. So we're gonna maybe take this, we're gonna wrap the paper around here and we're gonna rub them together, rub them together, and electrons are going to move. Now on this table, we can see that steel is more negative. What does that mean? It means that, so it says that steel is more negative. Whoa, not steet. <laughs> steel, Kevin. Um, steel, they say, is more negative on the table. Now, you've got to understand what that means. It means after the materials have been rubbed together, steel will be more negative, will be more negative. Okay, now let's quickly say that we had an equal amount of positives and negatives over here. See how we've got three positives and three negatives? And then and then let's just say for this paper, let's add one more electron over there. So now for the paper, you can see that there are, um, or here for the steel, we've got three positives and three negatives. For the paper, we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight positives, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight negatives. Okay, so you see how these, this one now is neutral before we rub them, and this one is neutral before we rub them. Now we're gonna go rub them together, and what they tell us is that the steel is gonna be lower down, so it's more negative, whereas the paper is closer, well it's higher up on the table, so it's gonna be more positive, okay? So the paper will be more positive. This is after you rub them. So that means, so you gotta think about, is the, are the electrons gonna go from the paper to the steel, or from the steel to the paper? Well, they tell us that the steel's gonna become more negative. So that means the electrons are gonna move from the paper to the steel. So some of these electrons are gonna move from the paper to the steel. So maybe, maybe two electrons are gonna move over, so, so let's scratch, let's scratch these two electrons out. Okay, so they, they are now gone, and they are now gone. So now we only have six electrons over here, and then those two electrons are gonna end up going to the steel. So let's put an uh, electron there, an electron there. So now the steel has five electrons. So can you see that if you had to add this together, the steel is now negative two, the steel is now negative two, and the the um, steel rod and the paper is now going to be positive two. So can you see that the paper ended up being positive? And that's what it says, the paper is higher up, so it's closer to the positive side, whereas the steel is closer to the negative side. And even if you compared, for example, these two over here, the sulfur is gonna be the one that goes positive, and this one goes negative. And if, for example, you had to compare um, this one and this one, well, this one will go negative and this one will go positive. So one of them will always go negative and one will always go positive. If you had to take these two, well, this one's closer to the positive side and this one's closer to the negative side. Um, they can't both go positive, okay? So I know that, for example, if you look at these two, or these two, they're both very close to the positive, but the one that's lower down always goes to the negative side, and the one that's higher up always goes to the positive side. So this is just a really nice table to help you identify what will happen to the electrons when you rub the two materials together. Another thing I wanna mention is that if you look at these two objects, can you see that if you had to put like a big box around these objects, there were no electrons added or taken away from that whole system. What I'm trying to say is that all of the electrons and protons that we had, all that happened was the electrons just moved over. We didn't add any electrons from the outside, or we didn't 
we didn't put any we didn't get rid of any electrons all that happens is that the electrons that were over here we simply moved them over to this rod that's all that we did we didn't take electrons or protons and bring them in from the outside we literally just moved them from the one we just moved the electrons from the one object to the other object so before we move to our next uh, thing that I want to talk about I just want to make a quick summary here so in this example we can just say that the the um, the paper lost two electrons and therefore became more positive and then we can say that the steel gained two electrons and became negative so we started by saying how to make electrons move and we said that if it's insulators or things where it's difficult to make electrons move um so we just said here yeah, difficult for electrons to move and so we would use some type of rubbing or friction to try get them to move. Now I'm going to show you what happens when you have conductors where it's easy for electrons to move. So what happens now is we don't need to rub the materials together. So what we'll do is we'll use these like balls. Sometimes they call them pith balls. I'm not sure if your teacher showed you any experiments, but they usually show it like this on some type of stand. Let's just make them a little bit bigger. Okay, now obviously these balls are gonna contain loads of atoms with protons and electrons and things like that. But let's just say, for example, that this one has, um, let's just say it's got three protons, three protons and 10 electrons. Okay, now let's say that this other one has um, five protons and it's got three, or let's say uh, two electrons, okay? So if you had to look at the overall charge, the overall charge of this one would be three positives and 10 negatives. So three, neg three take away 10 is gonna be negative seven. So that's its overall charge. Okay, if you look at this one's overall charge, it's got five positives and two negatives. So five take away two is positive three. So what happens is that, remember we said it's all about electrons, electrons and electrons. So what happens is that we are gonna take these two balls and we are gonna make them touch. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna bring them together and they are gonna touch. Now, while they are busy touching, you need to understand the following. So while they are touching. We're not gonna rub them together or anything like that. They're just gonna touch. Electrons will move from the more negative to the more positive, okay? So which one's more negative? This one is more negative. And so what happens is that um, the electrons are gonna go, let's call this one A and let's call this one B. So here we've got A, let's put it over here, A, and here we've got B. Electrons are gonna go from A to B, they're gonna keep moving from A to B until the amount of charge on both objects is exactly the same. So let's say here, until the overall charge on both objects is the same. So after a few moments, the charge on both of these is going to become the same. And I can actually, I'll show you how to calculate what that charge will be. Here's a formula that you're gonna use. You're gonna say Q nu is equal to the charge of the first object before they touch, plus the charge of the second object before they touch, and then you divide that by two. So that's gonna be minus seven plus three divided by two. And if you had to go calculate that, you would eventually end up with negative two. So what will happen is that they will keep, they will keep um, transferring over until both of them have exactly the same charge. So they're both gonna end up becoming negative two. At that moment, they are both the same charge. Now, if you understand how charges work, when charges have the same charge, they actually don't like each other anymore and they push each other away they repel, and so what will happen is that they will push each other away, 
and A will end up going over here where its new charge will be negative two and B will end up going over here where its new charge will be negative two and there we go. So this is a very important formula, uh, this formula that you need to know whenever you have two objects that touch each other and then they decide to move away. Well, they touch each other and then the electrons move from the more negative to the more positive until the overall charge of both objects is the same, then they will repel. They then repel. So here's a quick example that I want you to try. We've got two charges, A and B. Uh, I'm not talking about any of the units. Maybe your teacher says coulombs and nano coulombs. I'm not talking about that just yet. Okay, that's not important right now. For now, I'm just teaching you the understanding and how to do the calculations. So it says charge A and charge B come together. Okay, so that means that we have charge A and charge B. Now charge A is positive four, that's a charge, and charge B is negative two. Now they're gonna be brought together. Okay, so now they're gonna be brought together. So this is A, this is B, neg um, positive four, and negative two. Now it says determine the new charge. So what we said was that when these two are gonna touch, Electrons will always move from the more negative to the more positive. So electrons move from the more um, from more negative charge to the more positive charge. Okay, so electrons will move from B to A then, because B is more negative, so electrons will keep moving. And what will eventually happen is that the electrons will keep moving from, from B to A until both of them have the same charge. So electrons will move from B to A until both charges are the same. Then they will repel. So to work out the new charge, we're gonna say Q nu is gonna be equal to the first one plus the second one divided by two. And so that's gonna be four um, plus minus two divided by two. You see how I'm adding them together? And if you had to work this out, you're actually gonna end up with one. So when they move apart again, they are both gonna have a charge of positive one. For the last part of this lesson, we're just gonna talk about what charge is measured in. So we're gonna talk about Coulomb, but then I'm also gonna talk about the other types of things that your teacher has maybe showed you like picocoulomb, nanocoulomb, millicoulomb, microcoulomb, and I'm just gonna talk about that for a bit. That won't take too long, and then we'll be done. So we've been speaking, for this whole lesson, we've been speaking about these electrons and these protons and all these charges. Now charge is measured in coulomb. So charge, so the unit, the unit is coulomb. You know like if you tell someone that you weigh 50 um, or you have a mass of 50 kilograms, well the unit is kilograms. But when we talk about charge, it is coulombs. Okay, uh, let's just write that out. Uh, coulomb. Now the symbol, the symbol is we use a big Q, like that. So that's why when you saw when we used that formula, we went the new charge is equal to the first one's charge plus the second one's charge divided by two. But then when you give the answer, let's say the answer is three, then you would say three coulombs because that is the unit. Okay, now, um, so for example, let's just say, let's say we had something here that's got four, um, f four coulombs. Then you could say that this one, let's say this is A, then you could say that the charge of A is equal to four coulombs. Okay, so Q is the symbol. Now, sometimes they're not gonna give it to you in coulombs, sometimes they're gonna give it to you in millicoulombs or microcoulombs, which is like a weird type of U, okay? Or they're gonna give it to you in nanocoulombs or picocoulombs. So, if you ever have to change these ones to become normal coulombs, then all that you do is the following. So you'd go times 10 to the negative three. I'll show you how to do this now with a calculation. Times 10 to the negative nine and times 10 to the negative 12. Okay, so here we go. So for example, if they give you three millicoulombs and you need to convert that into coulombs, then you're just gonna say three multiplied by 10 to the negative three. 
you see there? And so you could then calculate that. And on your calculator, that's just gonna say three times 10 to the negative three. Now for this one, you would say 12 times 10 to the negative nine, because this is nanocoulomb. And then for this one, you would say five times 10 to the negative 12, because that's picocoulomb. And then this one would say nine times 10 to the negative six, because that is microcoulomb. So this one's milli, milli. This one's micro. This one's nano. And this one is picocoulomb.